drink too much milk. I don't think you have a single celebrity impression in your arsenal. Can you do anything like that? Do you have any ability like that? I'm Morgan Freeman. No. It's the easiest one. No. Actually, I have a good one of uh, Lemmy from Motorhead. Well, I, I don't... I, I wouldn't know what to compare it to. The Ace of Spades! Oh, yeah, okay. That guy. And he was in Airheads, which I watched last night. I was editor of the school magazine! You That's watched Unbreakable and Airheads last night? I watched Airheads last night. was Unbreakable night the night before? And Unbreakable was the night before. Never. We did a never before scene with Kayla. I recorded it as a podcast. Did you really? <laughs> no. I was going to say. Somebody's got to put out movie content. I'm putting out. Uh, so I, I recorded with Ellis this past week. It should be going up um, in the next few weeks, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to hear it. I think it went pretty well. You know, you know me, though. I never think it's good when I'm doing it. But then when I listen to it, I'm like, yeah, this is the podcast. Habitual naysayer to the new shirt coming out in June. <laughs> Just kidding. Speaking of habitual naysayer, you're accusing me of that a lot lately. But you've been saying negative things about uh, a lot of TV shows lately. You don't think Fargo's relevant, even though you're just flat out wrong. You said Master. I don't really of, believe that. You said Master of None was nothing, and you forced me to watch an episode today because of how great it was. Absolutely, we're going to talk about it in just a second. We're going to talk about Twin Peaks eventually, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you naysay as much as I do. No, that's not true. I uh, just it uh, absolutely is. No, I'm th- I'm the the positive one. No. Yeah. Christina posted that uh, gif proving that I'm the happier one of the Because you waved to the camera? Hey, she posted it. I happen to agree. Of course you do. Yeah. Of course you do. Shout out to her by the way. She's great. What a great fan of ours. We have a lot of them. We have a lot of great. No, I wouldn't. Know, I, I wouldn't stop no. the fan thing. I'm I don't not, like. Calling that's exactly fans. what I was gonna say. That's I don't exactly like it. what I was gonna say. Chill the hell out. I was gonna <laughs> say she's not even a fan at this point. If friends, Let's do you follow friends. her on Twitter? Well, yeah. Okay, good. I was gonna say you can't call her a friend if you don't follow her on Twitter. One of my Makuga. favorite things. One of my favorite things is that she uh, <laughs> of the th- the three of us. Her, myself, and you. Yeah, she uses the TV time app more than more than we do, <laughs> and I like it. Every I don't even watch some of the shows that she posts about, but I like every single one that she posts. Oh, really? Because I like the fact that oh, she uses they the go app. to her Twitter. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, yeah. I wonder if she does the video reactions too. I don't know if she's if she is capable of doing that because we're on a beta right now. No. Yeah, we're still on the beta. I don't think that's true. It's I 100% didn't, true. I didn't sign up for the beta. It's just the app up, updated one day. Do you have access to all the features that I, that I do? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't Anyways. think I'm in the beta. The, what, the a strange app conversation. Updated. what a strange conversation to have on site and sound. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Feeling, Check uh, out the... T- well, actually, no. I wanted to transition to this anyway. What the hell are you guys talking about? We're talking about the TV Time app. It's a really great app for any uh, TV fan. It's like a, it's a couple of different things. It's like a, a message board slash comment section slash uh, social media. You get to go into the app. You like all of your favorite shows and you become a fan of all of your favorite shows. It becomes a tracker of how many episodes of that TV show you've watched, of any episodes of uh, TV that you've watched, and it kind of uh, calculates it all up and you can uh, see that you've wasted you know, 15 hours, 15 days watching TV shows. Uh, so that's pretty fun. And you can also talk to the people that are at those uh, same points that you are in the, in the series. So like right now, since we just finished watching Master of None Season 2, Episode 4, I'm going to mark that in my app. And then it's going to be confused because it's going to be like... Yeah, it's going to be like, have you watched the rest of season two or just episode four? And you'll clarify for it. Uh, I, and, want, I want to talk about that episode in just a second. But while we're on the subject I'm, of, I'm hang on, of social media, I have something I have to admit. Today, I signed up for Pinterest. How do you feel about that? I like it. You like it? Yeah. I'm going to figure out how we can use it to our advantage. I was going to say, <laughs> you know why? Because it's business. And I'm becoming more business-minded every day, Jay. I follow That's Gary good. Vaynerchuk on all social media. He inspires me daily to to wake up. Did you listen to his Rogan episode? No, I have not. But I've been listening to his own episodes, the Gary V audio experience, Jay. 
on his podcast. You should check feed. out his Rogan. That's where uh, yeah. our worlds collide. As Is Power it? Man 5000 said at one point. So let me tell you yeah, they, why. They I, did say that at Let one me point. tell you why I signed up for Pinterest. I have, first of all, let me just say this. Don't really know the difference between You're, Pinterest and Instagram in terms of what they both offer, regardless. You're doing a lot of that Bernie Sanders lightly, by the way. What's Let that? me just say this. You're doing that a lot. Yeah. Reminds me of Bernie Sanders. Yeah, every time I, I go, it. I have quips at all. No, let me just do. say this. So I went on there today because I was working on some design stuff for some upcoming things going on in our space. And I was sort I sort of hit a wall and I needed some inspiration. So I uh, Googled graphic design inspiration and I saw some stuff. And the first thing I clicked on took me to a website. And I was like, these designs are crazy. This is, I love this website. I'm going to bookmark this website. And I looked in the top left corner and it was Pinterest. And I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. So I signed up for an account. And then it made it gave me. Five. Did you do it under the sight and sound Gmail? No. And then I, because I've got to test it out first, see how it goes. Anyways, it gave me. I had to pick five things to follow, and it had these like preloaded uh, categories, and th- none of them I was interested in. It was like men's hairstyle, uh, men's fashion, which is I am in. Those fa- are two things you care about. I don't really care about men's hairstyles. Actually, I do. That's not true. You're right. You're right about that. But I don't want it on my Pinterest. I don't want it littering my Pinterest. I'm going to figure out a way to make this work for us. So if you use Pinterest and you like sight and sound, the okay. future is bright. Okay. Going back to what I was transitioning to, um, by the time this comes out, we will be looking ahead at the Leftovers series finale. That's which, right. if you don't know, we've been podcasting and recapping the Leftovers on this very podcast feed if you're listening to this on sk plus know that sight and sound is its own podcast and that's where weekly comes out first on mondays and we got all kinds of other stuff going on we've been recapping and discussing the leftovers all season uh last week i wasn't available and i couldn't uh, join you for that we will have put out the episode seven recap by the time this episode of weekly is out and we will be looking ahead at the finale um how are you feeling about it? How, uh, well, of the leftovers? Uh, well, both about the podcasting with it, about the leftovers. I mean, are you? How are you feeling at this point? You know what? Oddly enough, oddly enough, the leftovers podcast that we've been doing, I think, is some of the best stuff we've done. I think our analysis of it, maybe not too. the same type of analysis that you that people are looking for. You know, we're not we're not the guys that are uh, diving deep and, and reading lots of essays that are written about things. We're not the most knowledgeable, but we know what we're talking about. At least we picked up on the fact that David Burton was in the, the boat episode. Yeah. Whereas my friend Goodman in our comment section was like, wow, I didn't even realize that was the same guy. (laughs) Yeah. Look, there, there's levels, there's levels, uh, to, to like podcasting. There's the guys that, do it they they just got some stuff and they're sitting in a garage somewhere there's your npr level Mark thing Mayer? and then well yeah that's true and then there's us like in between we're the guys you just like to hang around with yeah yeah and i i like it i've enjoyed it the season itself again like we've been saying not what i've expected uh doesn't make it any less enjoyable yeah I, I'm on the same page with you, I think. I mean, I, I agree. The podcast has done really well on Sight and Sound, uh, especially on YouTube. I've been really, uh, really pleased with the YouTube numbers. I mean, I, I think our the one before the last one has like 700 plays on YouTube. Yeah. So I've And been that's very, without a platform like TV time to push. In fact, I think sometimes the YouTube <laughs> the YouTube views do better than yeah. the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been very pleased with that. So if you guys are listening to this and you've been following along with us, watching the leftovers, just want to say thanks and uh, grab our leftovers themed T-shirt, sightsoundpod.com. But uh, I'm gonna be sad to see it end. I am too. Yeah, we. I don't know where we're going next. I know we have Game of Thrones on the horizon. We will be doing a Game of Thrones coverage here on Sight and Sound. Is that confirmed? I would love to. Okay. 
but in terms of our TV time distribution, nothing on the horizon just yet. But right. regardless, um, just a little bit behind the curtain. Something I realized I the other get day. I nervous when you do this. It's fine. Something uh, I realized the other day. Sort of looked at everything that we're covering, movies, music, and television. And even though I'm a music guy, I'm very passionate about music. I love talking about music. Uh, and I have no problem talking about movies for the most part. But I think that just me personally, I might be the best at talking about, not the best, but I might, my my best takes are on television show episodes for some reason. And I have no re- idea why that is. I could see that. I can believe that. I, I can't share share that with you. I mean, I, I think I give the best takes on movies, but your whole point is that like, if you're the music guy, your point being that you're yeah. surprised that your best takes come from something you're not as passionate about. Right. I don't think I can share in that. I mean, mine are very black and white. I'm best at movies. I'm worst at music and I'm pretty good at TV. Yeah. But that's my, about it. <laughs> my whole thing, my whole thing with music is I'm kind of, uh, I, I, I like doing the album reviews, um, in terms of just content in general for everybody. That's fantastic. But I, I like talking about, I, and I've always been like this. I like talking about more of the behind the scenes music stuff. That's w- what we do on the music episodes. We talk about more like the social. You, excuse me. It's what you do here. You uh, do a lot of setup in your music. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I don't, I don't like getting into the nitty gritty of things like, Oh, let's talk about these harmonies and the chord progressions. It's like, that's, you know, not everybody's down for that. I like to tell the stories of music more. If we're going to stay behind the curtain, I just want to let you know and I want to let our listeners know I'm fully aware that you are showing me up on YouTube. (laughs) I've been so lazy when watching TV. Like, I still have yet to see a single frame of American Gods. Um, Fargo, I watched like three episodes of and I don't think it's good. Actually, no, let me rephrase that. It's never hooked me. I think it's just okay. I'm glad we're having this discussion. Why? Because... Uh, You've been watching all along and you love it. No, uh, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't watched either of those either. I, I'm looking forward to you to doing more YouTube stuff that's not like a... I just... I, I'm enjoying making YouTube videos. I'm upgrading my internet. My internet is absolute trash i have to plan my days around uploading videos but that- your your upload speed is trash yes that's what's so weird our services are so different like the combination of download speed and upload speed is really different than yours and i think it's so bizarre but yet i'm flourishing in my content and and you uh pay like double what i pay right which is absurd yeah but anyway anyways uh the reason i was glad you brought this up I predicted at the beginning of the year that this was going to be the year for movies in the pop culture crown, and then TV and music was going to be last. I think TV is leading the race. I think movies might be in last. I think movies is last. Dude, where are the movies? You want to put it into pers- I'll put it into perspective. The movies, movie coverage has been trash on this podcast. Not the quality of it, but just like, all we're, you know what I'm saying? Let me let me um, refer you to John Campia, host of Collider Movie Talk. Never met him. Never he, heard of him. He posted something yesterday, I believe, where he said, we are approaching June and Logan is still the 100%. best movie of the year. No question and about I it. And I agree. No question. Just watched it the other night again. Logan and in second place, it would be Get Out, which came out in yeah. February. I haven't seen Get Out, but so j- just judging by the conversation around those things, where is where are all the movies? The the other good movie that I've seen this year didn't come out this year, and that was uh, the founder, the movie uh, with Michael Keaton about McDonald's. I got confused for a second. For some reason, I thought you you said the Fountain, and uh, no. <laughs> that came out forever ago. No, the the founder I believe came out late last year, but um, but yeah, man, I think movies is and last. Like for example, Baywatch a year ago, I was really excited yeah. to see that movie. I would have gone to see it in theaters if it was like at least above sixty. Um, but the fact that it was, you know, panned as one of the worst movies of the year, I just, I'm skipping it, but yeah, we're going to get into a movie topic, uh, later on today. I think it might turn the tide guarding guardings guardians being a little bit of a letdown. I am so, so, so excited for Spider-Man. 
Which is funny because when this came up, the Spider-Man discussion, you were like, you had no idea that I was as excited. I might go see it opening night. <laughs> I I am so... I mean, Civil War was my movie of the year last that year. That last trailer was good. The third trailer. Did you watch it this week? Yeah. Fuck yeah, I did. It was a good trailer. Yeah. Donald Glover was in it. Yeah, he was. <laughs> you're talking about Gambino. You're talking about... Yeah. You're talking about Atlanta's Donald Glover. You're talking Atlantis? about... You're talking about the best Twin Peaks, Donald Glover. Atlanta is... Okay, we'll get into that discussion a little bit later. I don't even agree with that, but we'll talk about it. We'll have a discussion about it in a second. All right, right. last thing I want to do from my perspective to wrap up this the top of the show portion. We skipped over uh, the Master of None debut last week on our TV discussion. I pass it up, whatever. Uh... It's been my goat. I, I don't know if you have shows like this. When I get food or when I'm eating something, I usually like to watch TV while I'm eating, and it's been my go-to show to watch while I'm want, while I'm eating dinner or eating lunch or whatever. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I, I just found myself going back to it. But last night, I watched episode four of season two, and I have not laughed. And been so shocked and surprised by an, not just a, a comedy, by an episode of television in a really, really long time for how smart this episode was. I've, I showed it, I watched it. I showed it to my girlfriend, Kayla, and I showed it to you. I've watched that episode three times in the last 24 hours. You watched it hours. thrice? Yes. I just showed it to you. What the hell? I just showed it to you. What did you think about it? Um, you were down on it go, going into it. I just wa- I wasn't in the mood. I was ready to podcast, but you forced me to lie down and watch the show. <laughs> I thought it was really good. I thought it was really good. Such a smart. Ep- First of all, it's not only is it a smart episode of television, but it's such a smart episode of television with like social commentary i was i was also um a little worried about watching episode four since i hadn't seen any of the right. season yet so if anyone's listening to this and they're just curious about the episode you you could go into it and not have any context for the rest of the season at all and you you uh it's like a short film you almost. let me know of that as well yeah absolutely um have you read his book modern no. romance no i haven't um, I always think about picking it up and I think now I'm going to get it because he has a lot of smart stuff about relationships and his stand up. I was actually worried that this episode might be a little, uh, it might recycle a lot of the things that he did in season one already. Well, the episode was um, done by Eric Wareheim. Oh, good. Yeah. From Tim and Eric. Yeah. Um, but it didn't do that. I thought it was really smart and really, uh, a lot of fun. And, uh, well, anybody that's ever been on a dating app or dating website or yeah. tinder or something like that i mean the tr- that's what the episode is it's a commentary on online dating and we've both had experiences on that i i met my girlfriend on tinder i, I mean we've been dating for almost a year and a half or a year and a half and yeah, i've met i've met works. girls that i don't like on tinder <laughs> Just some of the cues that they hit were spot on and fantastic. And the the, uh, bit at the end was so worth the payoff. And I'm not going to spoil it because people need to watch it. But I laughed so hard. I had to pause it the first time I watched it. And I fell over onto the (laughs) ground. And I was crying. I was disappointed at how little you laughed because I wanted you to lose it while I was with you. I didn't realize that that was your third time saying yeah. it. I was, <laughs> I was wondering throughout the episode, like, why? why he's, he made such a big deal about this. Why is he not laughing more? But I understand it now. Yeah, I was also anticipating like certain jokes. But Do you, uh, uh, do you have a go-to line like he does? Or do you change it line? every time on Tinder? I don't remember. Can, See, I was gonna say, can you remember? Let me that just say this: back? <laughs> I started doing online dating before t- Tinder even existed. Yeah, I started out on Match. dot com because, and that that whole we can have a longer discussion about this on a after party sometime. I would love to, in fact, because I'm fascinated by it. Um, 
Yeah, I went from being in a relationship for seven years and completely skipping out an entire period of my life where I was supposed to meet women as an adult. Yeah. I, I only knew women as friends and acquaintances, and I didn't know how to do it, man. I had yeah. no idea. I was like, where am I supposed to meet women? So I, at the time, it was kind of a, I was kind of ashamed of it to like be like, oh, I'm dating online, but now... Now that's how most people yeah, date. Now no one is not online. Exactly. So. And uh, I also remember those those nights of like the first date, like you have the anxiety and then going home and feeling just f- exhausted. I mean, absolutely exhausted from it because you're putting on the show and and you ask those exact same questions <laughs> like on every single date. I just thought it was such a smart episode of television. My favorite first date ever. Um, I was going to ask you that question, but I don't know if, if you wanted to extend this on. It longer. was the most, it's the most singular experience that's ever happened in my life because it had nothing like it had ever happened before and nothing like it has ever happened since. Yeah. It was really weird. Um, she was my, uh, waitress at Buffalo Wild Wings <laughs> and she was, uh, she was adorable and, um, I remember flirting with her at the table. I was with some friends, and um, I knew uh, the hostess was a friend of mine. So when I, you know, I spent my whole dinner kind of flirting and stuff, I gave her gave her a nice tip. I always think that's the I think that's weird. Wait, you gave the tip to? I'm confused. You gave the tip to your waitress who yes. you're on a date with. No. Okay. She, I'm. I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. She was my waitress. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> so. Um, I gave her a nice tip, which I do think is weird to be like, Hey, I like you. Here's some money. <laughs> Cause that's what you're doing. Yeah. But I mean, guys do it to get the, get her attention, you know, a hundred percent. So, um, I didn't do the, the, I didn't leave her my number on the ticket. I've done that before as a joke, but I didn't do it at that time. Right. Um, so anyway, as I left, I were stuck. you with Goodman when you did that for the first time? <laughs> Cause that sounds like, <laughs> you know, I might've been, <laughs> he, I, he might've been like, you won't do this. And I think I did. Um, but, um, <laughs> but anyway, so I walk up to my hostess friend and she's really cute. Um, I, I don't know. I'd like to, uh, what's her name? I'd like to get her number, blah, blah, blah. And next thing I know, I just have a Facebook message from the girl saying, so are you going to take me out or not? And I was like, oh, shit. I didn't even have to like, there was no warm up conversation. I didn't have to do anything. I was like, yeah, let's go. Picked her up. We went to dinner, had a nice time. I didn't feel any pressure to like, to like be on. Cause right. it was like, accidentally I had already made enough of an impression by being her customer. <laughs> and like, she was just already game to be on the date, you know? So I didn't even, it wasn't like I had to try. And, um, anyway, we saw each other a couple more times and I'll <laughs> tell you, I'll tell you how that ended off air. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cause it's very adult. <laughs> oh my God. Here we go. My, my most, my most absurd first date was actually Kayla and mine's first oh, really? date. Uh, and I, how long have you all been together? Uh, I'm not almost, trying to get you in trouble. Almost two years, about a year, a year and a half. Um, it'll be two years in September, but our first date, I went and picked her up for brunch and she had to work that day. Mm-hmm. So we went and had brunch. We walked down to a restaurant called County club and I got there and things were very weird there. And I was like, what's going on here? And there was a camera crew. <laughs> they were filming a food network show there. And we had to sign like a NDA. Yeah. Like a whole thing. Were you on TV? So I, I watch a lot of food network. I really do. Never have I ever ever known that about you yes a huge Not fan of food network has that ever come you know up. i'm a big, a big fan of i like to go to nice restaurants and stuff like that okay. you anyways are, yeah, okay. sit down here and having you know the first date conversation and i look over and michael simon is standing to my left Who's you know that? who michael simon is no he is one of the biggest stars on food network he, host, know, he hosts the clash of the cupcakes uh, he he is a master chef or not a master chef uh uh iron chef he, he's a bald guy with a little goatee. You know him if you saw I, him. I guarantee I've seen him though. Yeah. I've seen Iron Chef. He was smoking a cigarette and it took three hours. To smoke the cigarette? No, for them to even come and get our order. 
because like they kept having to set up shop shots and stuff we had to leave we didn't even get to eat we had to leave she had to go to work she had to go to work and we ended up eating at noodles and company for, for it it was just so absurd that's that, great yeah it's a crazy story that's awesome yeah it is awesome never heard i've never heard any of this before really um do we need to go to break or do you want to get into the first topic uh we can just get right into it i don't know you oh you, you know what we need you to do the charge yeah when we go to break for the first time we need to select the winner because we were holding a contest um we posted on our instagram a picture of an alien covenant poster that i have in my possession wait where is it it's probably over there somewhere what if you lost it what would we do <laughs> anyway uh we asked you guys to to follow us on instagram to like that picture and to tag uh one of your friends and we will select the winner in the movie portion of our episode um so yeah be on the lookout for that we will be announcing that um what are we getting to first i let's let's, let's i continue. don't i don't want to do twin peaks first let's do what we think is going to be the shortest segment okay music oh okay 100 percent. that's your call go ahead uh, um this week i was going to uh lead off the discussion and do this discussion centered around this new bryson tiller album that came out it came out a month early and it was a surprise album surprise. drop the crazy thing about this week, though, was there were two surprise album drops. The second from James Vincent McMorrow. The heavily anticipated. Well, you don't even know who he is. The <laughs> he, he he has uh, 2.8 million monthly listeners on Spotify. Bryson Tiller has about seven. It's regardless. Like a podcast. <laughs> regardless. Uh, the issue with discussing all of this topic or this whole thing i wanted to talk about bryson tiller he's from kentucky he's from louisville we we are not from louisville but it's cool that he's from our state and his first album was a smash hit i mean it was a Mm. breakout hit it went platinum which is very difficult to do i had no idea yeah very difficult to do but he's got seven monthly listeners on spotify seven million oh i thought you were making a joke like bryson tiller was comparably a like worse than james vincent mcmorrow no no you missed seven million wow, yeah okay. he is in the top 200 uh artists listened to on spotify worldwide i mean he's holy shit i had no idea he was that big massive he is signed to rca records some say uh some are some call him the next drake i mean just for what he brings to the <laughs> to the table his first album trap soul fantastic one of my favorite things about him in general he doesn't have the same sort of uh, braggadocious sort of vibe and stuff that, that you get from people. First of all, he doesn't want to be famous. He's gone on record as saying, I don't want to be famous. I want to be a songwriter for people. He's written songs for Chris Brown. He's written songs for a bunch Trash. of people. But he says that he makes records to support his daughter. He's 23 years old. He worked at Papa John's Pizza and UPS at the exact same time while he was trying to grind to get this shit done Yeah, as an artist. And he talks about that very frequently in his music. Um, and he, he, in his first album, Trap Soul, talks extensively about being a young father and about you know, having to not be able to provide for his daughter and his baby mama and having his baby mama's mama, you know, say, stop chasing this rap dream. Da, 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 da. Uh, that's why I love Bryson Tiller so much. And that's pretty cool. And the fact that he's from here, unfortunately, I don't think this album is that great. <laughs> this new album that came out, uh, true to self. Mm. It's a very bloated album. It's like, 16 songs and it's just oh, holy. It's, yeah it's missing it's missing the mark quite a bit for me and that's that's unfortunate but um yeah that's why i don't really have much to say i about listened it. to like five songs it didn't stick yeah it's uh i mean it didn't stick i i don't i don't know what it was in particular there are elements on it sure that that appeal to me but it reminds me of of rap and hip-hop music that I I remember growing up when yeah. I, I I had never heard a rap album that I could listen to from front to back until I was in college. Young Jeezy Stug Motivation 101 easily. You serious? No. Okay, but I I just I don't There is a lyric in that album that 
says, Patty cake, patty cake, microwave. <laughs> That's how he opens a verse. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I mean... I don't remember full albums that really ever grabbed me, and that's kind of how this was. Oh, Young Jeezy, Stug Motivation 102, easily. Great sophomore album. You have, you have nothing to contribute to this portion of the conversation. Regardless, let me shift over into the James Vincent McMorrow <laughs> uh, surprise album drop. But before I do, <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this question. This is sort of an anomaly in media the surprise album drops things just happening what what do you think about this what do you think about albums just like waking up one day the the bryson tiller album came out a month early he gave he gave a release date and he, put, he was I like i would be scared to death yeah. to release an album early without all the promotion without all the marketing being fully in gear i mean i don't that can only work for so many people now yeah, you did absolutely. You did shine a light and make me realize how big Bryce Tiller actually is. So I guess it doesn't affect him in the way that I originally thought it might. Yeah, if Brave but the Storm I mean, released a, a surprise album, people would just be like... Yeah. Yeah. And if anything, it might actually uh, work against it. Because then more people would get annoyed that I'm trying to get people to listen to my album. You know what I mean? Think think about how self-conscious we are getting people to listen to Sight and Sound once an episode is up. It's like, how is that supposed to work? Yeah. So... I just, I just, promotion and marketing is marketing for a reason. You know what I mean? 100%. And then you just go against those rules. I mean, I respect it. I think it's cool if you can pull it off because that means you're big enough. Did you all ever play an album release show? You know, I don't think so. I mean, nothing. I mean, they were big. It, not, I don't think we branded it, but we probably announced like on MySpace, like, yeah. hey, we're going to have our brand new. But it wasn't specifically about that, I don't think. That's not how I remember it anyway. I played one album release show yeah and uh our buddy matt wilson set it up which was mistake number one uh, he's a great promoter but the reason it was a mistake was we had promoted it, it was going to be this big thing it was it ended up being fine and it ended up being good for the show but he decided he was like oh you know what i'm gonna make it Emerosis yeah. album release show too and i was like what they're, they're they're signed to rise records like, yeah what? this sucks i think we even <laughs> headlined the show and i was no we didn't headline the show what he, he what always made album them. would have that would that have been for this is your way out yeah huh yeah there we did the same album release show as them interesting ridiculous that's funny. Anyways, but yeah, uh, nice. marketing and having that was huge for smaller bands. But to just do this, think about this. Think about if all of a sudden <laughs> you woke up one day and they were like, hey guys, Last Jedi is in theaters right now. What would you do? Would you call into work and be like, I have to, I've got to go to the yeah movie theater? Yeah. It would be pandemonium. Yeah. I would call into work easily. Just like I do with Drake. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a stupid question. Right. Well, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, it's just crazy. But but that's I, okay. You're talking to the guy that <laughs> I had a a whole bunch of people over for a UK game. We had a, a I had a UK viewing party. We were watching the basketball game. UK being University of Kentucky. Yeah. Not like a over. We're not like a satellite shot of Kentucky, the United Kingdom. Kentucky Wildcats basketball game was on. I had a bunch of people over. It was probably like one early afternoon. I get a call from work, and I'm thinking, oh, they want to see if I can come in and get some extra hours. Pick up the phone. My supervisor's like, Ryan, you know that uh, you're supposed to be at work today. I said what? Yeah, you were supposed to be here at noon. So I was already late. It's like, oh. And I looked around at the room full of people that I had over, and I said, well, I'm kind of having a UK party. And she goes, so you're not coming in? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you know your schedule? I don't, I don't know. You should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, it was like four years ago. Well, okay. So these surprise album drops, when they happen – just being a huge music fan, even when I don't care that much about them, I still get pretty excited about it. Like the, uh, what, not the, not the biggest Frank Ocean fan I am now, but when like swim good, when he put out blonde and endless in the same day, dude, I about lost my damn mind. I about lost my mind. It was great. 
it was fantastic. The only thing I think that works with with your side of things are maybe like Netflix shows. Sometimes they just release Netflix shows, so you have no idea what day they're coming out. Well, it's funny because someone like me and you who keep track of all this stuff, uh, we we typically know release dates. Like we knew when Master of None was coming out, a show that was released on Netflix that we compl- that surprised me. Like right now, we're talking. Did you know that Bloodline season three came out? No idea. <laughs> No idea. In fact, you even like, bringing that up like, just makes me <laughs> just makes me sad that Kyle Chandler <laughs> is in a show that I don't like, care that much like about. Like right now, as as it sits, Bloodline is literally over. Like people have seen a finale to Bloodline, and you and I had no idea that that was even out until I saw it on Twitter today. It's not worth talking about. <laughs> it's irrelevant. It's nothing. Before we go to break and leave uh, music, because I guess it's over. Well, I was going to mention just a oh, little bit ahead. about James Vincent McMorrow. Oh, I'm sorry. This is another contender for album of the year. This you know, this was an absolute shock. His last album came out. In September of last year, mm. I, yeah, I remember you mentioning him. I had on no your idea. Top albums. No idea. He was in my top ten of last year. Mm. He is somebody in the same vein of like maybe a Bonnie Bear to a certain extent, maybe a little bit more accessible. Mm-hmm. But he did something that I have been saying people should should have done for a really really long time, and he was basically making this sort of indie R and B music. He went new metal. No. He was making this indie R&B music, but instead of being some white Irish guy making beats on his computer, he said, you know what? I'm going to reach out to a little guy by the name of 1985 and get him to produce my my beats. Whoever that is. Who is 1985, you say? How about a Grammy Award winning producer who wrote a song called mm, Hotline Bling and many other uh, Drake songs? So now you've got this- It's my favorite Drake song. Now you've got this hip hop producer- working with an indie artist mm. and it is straight up molten lava fire. Would I like it? Yes, 100%. Swear to Zeus. His album We Move, I think you would really really enjoy. No, is that the new one? That's that's the last one from last year. Okay. This new one, a little bit more artistic. I don't know about if it's okay. your speed or not. But regardless, it's to put out an album this soon makes me scared. I th- I get scared when people don't spend enough time on their albums i think it shows however this one was great and it really really impressed me in fact our boy wiley todd <laughs> sent me a, a dm and said you really turned me on to this new james or this james vincent mcmorrow guy oh yeah and i was like oh awesome so yeah i don't know how it would fit with your criteria it didn't move the needle at all oh D- of the snelling algorithm that's that you right. have in place okay just that, wanted to clarify that's right we move definitely check it out it was in my top 10 of last year and this new one called True Care, really, really enjoying it. The last point I wanted to bring up, how... No, I'm not even going to ask you. I'm just going to say, I find it extremely unacceptable that Chris Brown is still famous. And I'm not... The the blame has shifted. I'm no longer pissed about him and how shitty he is as a person. I'm pissed at us, at society, as people who acted mad about his behavior towards beating women, and yet we continue to still listen to his music. And I know that we've talked about, we've had conversations about filmmakers and actors and things, uh, how we have to separate art from artists. Yes. But I think it's more it's more about the individual when it comes to music, especially if you're a solo artist. If you are more interested, if you're interested in this conversation, there is a fantastic podcast uh from a podcast called the music nerds and they go into this very in depth about how they give some passes to some people like Michael Jackson is incredibly celebrated. Of course, nothing was ever proven with him, but allegations exist. And then you have somebody like a Chris Brown who they just don't give a pass to somebody like Tim Lambesis from as it lay dying. Yeah. I cannot listen to that band anymore. Right. If for people that don't know, he hired a hitman to kill his wife. He just, he was in jail for years. Yeah. They played him on the Schmodown. They played a Austrian Death Machine song on the Schmodown one time. Oh, that's right. Anyways, um, yeah, that's fascinating. Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby yeah. has been literally outlawed by society. One hundred percent. 
like the TV show was taken down. All the people that worked on that TV show don't even receive royalties for that anymore. Like, do you, do you remember when Kanye West declared on Twitter that he was innocent just, <laughs> just to, <laughs> to cause an uproar around his new album coming yeah, out? Yeah. Life of Pablo came out and he, he just went on Twitter and said, Bill Cosby is innocent. <laughs> Speaking of Kanye and Chris Brown, the song Waves on Life of Pablo, only song with Chris Brown in it I've ever enjoyed. You didn't like I Can Transform You? No, I don't even know what that is. I Can Transform You? No, it just reminds Any me of Michael Bay. You Are you ready to go to break? Let's, uh, let's go to break in just one second. Yesterday, I tried to turn you on to some new music. I think it was successful. It was. We've got this new thing on our Instagram I'm doing called Song of the Day. Instagram stories. Instagram check it stories. Out. Check it out. I post uh, a song a day. What I'm going to do is in June, I'm actually going to be putting those in a playlist. And if people, I'll link it in the description below if people want to follow the playlist and have something to listen to. You should put that uh, link in your music episodes. I will. Cool. 100%. Let's go to break. All right. Uh, when we get back, we're going to... Uh, reveal the winner of the Alien Covenant movie poster and preview uh, Wonder Woman a little bit. Be right back. Did you know that Sight and Sound has a YouTube channel? If you didn't, you need to go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search for Sight and Sound or you can find a link in the description of this podcast. But yeah, if you're wanting more Sight and Sound content, you can get a ton of it over on our YouTube page. There's a lot more content over there. I do music reviews. Ryan talks about movies. We talk about TV, obviously. And yeah, it's kind of a a nice little place to go if you need some more sight and sound in your life. We're back. Um, I opened up my window in my bedroom because it was hot as balls. But if the birds get too loud, Jay, I'm going to have to shut it. You'll hear me legitimately running. We will be terrified ex- of birds. We're now exposing my entire neighborhood should to we, sight and sound. Should we throw throw out a few Twitter polls, maybe? <sighs> Are you giving up on the Twitter polls? No, I'm not giving up. I just I'm not in the mood. We've already gone. So, so we're gonna go a week without it. We've already gone halfway. You're gonna go. A week we're without literally it. halfway through this podcast. As long as as long as you can, as long as you don't set up ones for topics. That you, that you're more attuned to. Yeah, you're right. Give give me some Twitter polls. I'll throw them out here real quick. How do you feel about surprise album drops? Do you like surprise album drops? That's one. What do you think uh, the habitual naysayer is going to say to that? <laughs> no one's no one's going to answer that. All we have is movie followers. They want us to. They want us to cut out music from Sight and you're, Sound. You're thinking too hard. Um, it, it's simply, I don't care for the question. <laughs> you can do one of... Uh, do you do, like surprise album drops from your favorite artists? Do you think we'll ever get surprise movie releases <laughs> in theaters? Cloverfield was kind of like that. Yeah, it kind of was. Both of them, sort of. Uh, the first no. one, not so much. No, the first one was. The second one, not so much. Yeah. The second one, they the second one was marketed exactly as the film was with the title. Yeah, we got but, a normal trailer. Yeah, but they put the trailer out, and then like the next month, the movie was out. You're like, that's how what the like hell? almost every indie movie is. Okay, well, same with Get Out. All right, I mean, it's just another example. Quit kicking your coffee over. Okay. Do you like surprise album drops from your favorite artists? Yes or no? You can follow the Twitter poll at Sight Sound Pod, and I forgot to put it out uh, for uh, of the course seven you did. Days. This is a uh, okay. Throw this one up too. I've okay, let's do one. this one. I've got another one. Okay, is rap and hip hop becoming our stale? Rap our rap and hip hop. Our rap and hip hop becoming stale music genres. Because I've said it multiple times. You just think every music genre is dying? No. Well, you didn't let me finish my point, dude. I've been loving me some rock music this year. And a lot of it has to do with you, me at six. How so? Because it was the first like big album that came out this year. Yeah. And it made me think, well, surely there's got to be better stuff than this to come out this year. 
<laughs> Lower than Atlantis. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So I was on a... And it, it, it made my heart warm that you were so excited for music so early this year. <laughs> so, so then I was like, well, I'm just going to try to... The best album that released so far this year is Balance and Composure's three-song EP. <laughs> Or de- I wouldn't even call it an EP. Do they even call it that? It's called it's a seven demos. inch. It's a seven inch. Timos, no. Uh, we'll have a review. I have a bunch of reviews on YouTube right now. Yeah, you do. Going back to showing me up here. All right, let's uh, let's get into. This no, next let's topic. Uh, announce the winner of the Alien Covenant okay. poster. Drew Laurel of Illinois, you have won yourself the Alien Covenant poster. Thank you so much for your support. I went on tour what, through your state. Should we? Let's. What should we do? Have them uh, post a picture of it. Post, post a picture of him receiving the poster and see if he'll uh, uh, talk about sight and sound. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and buy one of those shirts. Wear one of those. <laughs> we're we're adding another. <laughs> That's the fine print. You can get this poster, but yet to post a <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, uh, congratulations to uh, Drew, and I will be uh, I'll be contacting you, and I'll be sending it out uh, to you uh, this week because I've got to I've got to stop by the post office anyway because uh, <laughs> I tried to mail something out this week that didn't have a stamp on it. So, <laughs> um, okay, uh, we're gonna we're in the movie portion now. Let's uh, let's preview Wonder Woman and. Okay. I was afraid that I told you what movies was going to be this week. I was afraid that you were going to uh, not be so high on it. No, but not I think really. a lot. You have of, no idea what I think about things. That's true. I think a lot of stuff, especially recently, the fact that the embargo lifts the day that this podcast goes up. So much stuff has uh, developed since the last time that we talked about Wonder Woman, and I, I'm really excited to hear hear what you have to say because. I am more hyped than ever to see Wonder Woman. Um, when you consider the fact, excuse me, I'm, I've got hiccups. I'm sorry. When you consider the fact that so many people are tweeting out their reactions, not their reviews yet, their reactions about how much they enjoyed this film, and I think even even though the tweets are just uh, overly joyous. If that means they're just playing off of the hype, like if, if they're just uh, reacting to the fact that we haven't gotten anything substantial from DCEU and they're just overhyping Wonder Woman. The bar I, is low is what I you're would, saying. I would still be okay with that because yeah. that means that I, right now I'm confident that I'm going to go in and at least have fun and just acknowledge that DC can can do right. And I think that's all that I'm asking, and I, I'm confident that that's going to be my reaction going into this movie. Um, I loved, and I don't remember who said it, but I, I saw, I've seen plenty of comparisons from Patty Jenkins herself that she tried to make it uh, uh, as much as uh, like uh, the original Superman movie as possible. In fact, she even replicates a lot of the same uh, shots. The shot of Wonder Woman uh, putting her arm across piss. Chris Pine and Piss Pine, yeah. Uh, Chris Pine. That should be the alternate title for Twin Peaks. Piss Pine. Okay. Um, anyway, the I'm place not even between go. the pines. I'm it's not even going. What a great movie. Um, only in, only at the end. No, because you don't have that ending without the rest of the film. Yeah, but there's a Bonnie Vera song that plays. It's a generational uh, human study. But anyway. <laughs> Um, what was I saying? Patty Jenkins replicates a lot of the same shots. Uh, I've heard the tone is similar to the Christopher Reeve Superman. Um, I saw a comparison of, uh, they talked about it being the better Captain America first Avenger. I've seen the comparisons to the Rocketeer. Um, so anyway, I, I just think they're so, <laughs> I don't want, it's not something to celebrate. The movie sucks. The Rocketeer? It's trash. Why? That is, have you seen that movie? Not recently, but it's, I remember it's liking n- it. Not good. It's good when you're a child, and then when you grow up and know things about movies, it's not a good movie. Can't you just celebrate the fact that it's a fun, joyous movie, this this pulpy adventure film? You know what else is a fun, joyous movie? That movie we saw in theaters, what's it called? Uh, Green Room? The farting movie? Swiss Army Man? Yeah. No, fuck that movie. Exactly. Regardless, Okay. Take Rocketeer out of the equation, then. Jesus Christ. I'm excited. 
and, and I'm excited that everyone else is excited, and I I cannot wait to see what the reviews are tomorrow. What do you think? So what do you what do you think my opinion on on this is? I I think that you are more excited than ever as well. I don't think you're as excited as I am. Uh, you're not excited to the point uh, to where you're going to see this movie in theaters, even though I'm probably going to ask you to go with me anyway. Uh, so that we can cover it on Sight and Sound, because so far Sight and Sound is only going to be previewing Wonder Woman, but not uh, reviewing it, um, as far as I know. But uh, how accurate am I with all that? So uh, I made a statement after reactions to Suicide Squad came out. I said that I will not be going to the movies to watch any DCEU films until I have seen decent reviews of a film and then watched it at my home. I will not be spending absor- absor- is it absorbent? Ex- exorbitant? <laughs> I can't think of that word right now. And I can't figure out what you're trying to get at. If I'm not going to be spending ridiculous amounts of money to go to a theater uh, to see to see some film franchise that I think can do so much better and that so many people are screwing up behind the scenes. I just, I just, I don't want that anymore. I don't want that risk. But with that being said, uh, I think this movie, I think this movie has a lot going for it. I really, really do. I think it, it looks good. I think it, um, like you said, some of the reactions that are coming out maybe could be in a bubble. I think, I think, but they are from people you trust. Absolutely. Yeah. And and it's like you said, the bar is set a little bit low. Here's my issue with this film. And it's not, it's nothing. It's nothing like technical about it. This is not a movie for me. I don't like period pieces. Uh, if this movie was more of like a fantasy movie, something like Thor, I would probably be more into seeing it, but I I just, it's, it just doesn't interest me that much. I mean, it really doesn't. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with the character. I think wonder woman is an amazing character. There's not another type of character like her in, in the DC universe. Somebody that, I mean, she's one of the big, I guess you could say the big three in DC, the Trinity. I mean, a hundred percent. And, uh, it's an actual coin term, Jay. Oh, really? Uh, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. It's a trinity. Gal Gadot. Is that how we're going to say her name? Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. I know there's been some people critical of her acting prowess, and I, the only thing I have to go by is this role in <laughs> Batman versus Superman. I thought she was fine. I yeah, thought she's there was, fine. Enough. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it, so I don't really get the commentary about... You know, I think John Campy is the one that's who's been very vocal. Anytime this comes up, that's the thing he always says. Well, I'm not a big fan of her of her acting. I'm worried about her acting. She was fine the only other time she's played this role, so I don't really know why that's even a part of the discussion. Uh, unless well, she, she is in other movies. Yeah, and that's fine. That's fine, absolutely. But um, this is it's just not for me. But I have high hopes for it. Let me get your take on this. Let's do our game that we played with Guardians. Rotten Tomato score. Seventy three percent. Seventy three. Wow, that's lower than I thought you'd go. I'm gonna go higher. I'm gonna go seventy six percent. Okay. So we're in the same ballpark for yeah. sure. That for me is a huge success for a DC EU film. I've told you before. I mean, even when a movie's uh, at fifty. I could still probably be convinced to well not not convinced to like it. I could be convinced to go see it and still wind up enjoying it. Um, I, I'm really excited. I think it's going to be hilarious um, when I walk out of that theater. I can just tell by the trailer that I'm going to have this reaction. Just by the trailers, I think it's going to be hilarious that I walk out of a Wonder Woman movie and have it be the most developed. DC character on screen that we've had in the DC universe when we've already had two Superman movies. Yeah. I mean, that it blows my mind. Twitter poll. Is Wonder Woman going to be above or under 70% on Rotten Tomatoes? 
you can follow the Twitter poll at Sight Sound Pod, and I will make sure to uh, put it out seven seven days. The thing that also excites me about this coming out is that I feel like I, I this is just a hunch, my own notion that because we've heard stories about DC and Warner Brothers shifting gears a little bit uh, away from what they've already established, that this film sort of stands outside of what's already pre-established and can whatever happens in this film can be utilized in whatever direction they're going in moving forward, whether it be stuff continued on in Justice League or if they're shifting things after that. I like that it sort of stands on its own. And I think it's actually really cool that if that's the case, if this is their flag in the ground, like guys, we're turning over a new leaf, that Wonder Woman is now the franchise that's sort of going to lead that charge. Does that make sense as to what I'm saying? the, The flagship. Well, I don't think that's going to be the case because I think it's always and needs to be Batman. But I think Wonder Woman could easily take precedent over this Superman. Yeah. I've never heard anyone say that Henry Cavill is their Superman. You know what I mean? Well, I've never seen, I mean, the only, I've only seen BBS and he's barely in that movie. So that's right. He's more so developed in man of steel, but people always talk about, well, he's only Superman for like a day in man of steel. And it's like, okay, well he has, he has some more uh, development to, to, you know, there could, there can be more. Sorry. My window's open. I have no idea if they heard that a truck drove by. I'm sure they did. There's also geese. Oh my god! No way, that's god. a dog. Is that a dog or geese? That's a dog. Well, that's a dog. Wonder Woman. <laughs> what a great segment this is. I'm I'm still fascinated that you're just so. You can make the blanket statement that period pieces are not for you, even when it's wrapped in a superhero bow. That yep. blows my mind. That that's enough for you to just not care. I don't understand that. I just, I don't know, man. It's. You don't live in the past. <laughs> those time periods are already interesting enough. I don't need somebody run around with superpowers. Boo. It's just. Uh, Wait, what? That goes against your argument. What? That, that would be a great argument for why you love period pieces. No, I just don't what care. What you just said makes no sense. I just don't care. I don't like living in the past. I think if. It, <laughs> I think if anything. Um. Stories that are told in previous times are actually much more intriguing. I think cell phones have a lot to do with that. You know what? I don't like period pieces, but you're going to see my ass first in line for Dunkirk when it comes out. It's true. <laughs> Christopher Nolan's the only that's man. Why, that's why myself and no one else listening has any idea where you, how you uh, like things, if you like things <laughs> or not. That's why, he's the, that's why he's the new Steven Spielberg. I'd love to talk about that on a movies episode. I'm sure you would. Can we do that? We got to have a guest. I I, I agree. Pe- the people who listen to us in Schmoville are going to be like, all they do is ramble. They c- just, All they do is talk about stuff under their breath. Well, okay, well, let's continue to preview Wonder Woman <laughs> if we have <laughs> anything else left to say. I don't know what else I have to say. I don't either. I don't even I, want, I do think I'm the, not going to go see it. I think the trailers have been consistently great. Uh, one just came out this past week again. So, um, wait, okay. Oh, no, I'm feeling good. Let me say feeling this. I'm good about it. I will go to the movie theaters to see this if all of a sudden everybody is like, this thing is mind blowing. I mean, if they're saying that, like, this is. Like the best thing since The I, Dark I th- Knight. I don't think anybody... Well, people have said that. People have said it's the best DC movie since Dark Knight. Oh, well, that's different. Well, again, That's not different. I, I think Dark Knight Rises is pretty good. It's, it's and okay. And for someone to say that Wonder Woman's better than Dark Knight Rises, that means something to me. Absolutely. Dark Knight Rises is like a... For me, if I'm grading it, probably a B. Okay. It's still a good movie. It's all right. It's pretty good, yeah. It's a good movie. Have a high standard. Yeah, you watched Airheads before. Airheads is fucking great. All right, do we have uh, anything else to say about Wonder Woman? Other Michael than- Richards is in Airheads. Swear to Zeus? I swear to God, he's hilarious. I think it? I do that. Um, is that all we got? I guess so. This is anyway. I'm excited, and uh, all we want to do is rant about Twin Peaks. I can't wait to see it with you, Jay. All right, let's um. Let's take another break, and uh, then we'll finish up with some uh, TV talk. Let's do it. 
If you absolutely cannot get enough of sight and sound, we have you covered on all bases. You can always find us on all of our social media platforms like Twitter and Instagram by looking up at Sight Sound Pod. It's the same for both. Make sure you check us out there. Also, make sure you're liking our Facebook page because we want to get some good conversations going between our listeners and one another. So search for us on Facebook. Just search Sight and Sound. Use the ampersand. We're also on YouTube. Yeah. That'd be great. Let's get back to the show. I should be saving more. Money. All right, Jay. <laughs> we we you waited mumble- this long. You heard me mumbling under my breath about me uh, needing to save more money than I do. You don't need to save money. I do need to save money. For what? Uh, I'm A Showtime subscription? No, I'm canceling my Showtime subs- subscription. You don't want to watch I'm, Billions? I'm on the free... Uh, you know what I almost watched last night on Showtime because I have it for a month is... Billions? No. Is uh, Brokeback Mountain. Big fan. Oh, yeah? Never big, seen it. Big fan. Great film. We should do a Never Before Seen. R.I.P. Heath Ledger. Absolutely. I almost cried when he died. Really? I really did. Wow. Did you know that uh, the first song on the second Bon Iver album is sort of tied into his death. Were you aware of this? No. It's an interesting story. I'll tell it sometime. <sighs> okay, I'm sure you will. All right, let's uh, let's get to uh, why we're all here, ladies and gentlemen. Cody Ray Hecker should be ashamed of himself. N- no one, not only does no one know who Cody Hecker is listening to this podcast. Neither do I. We do not care. He's out of our lives. That's right. Now, let's talk about Twin Peaks. We weren't going to talk about this. We weren't, but um, it's a hot topic. I it, tweeted it about it. I tweeted about it today. A week later, uh, from the from the season premiere, people were already is still in their consciousness. They were responding, reacting to what I had said on Twitter. Uh, I won't spoil what I said, but this was sort of a surprise album drop to a certain extent. Week one. Why? Because no one ha- no one knew that they were going to be releasing the first four episodes. Is that true? That's one hundred percent true. They some people thought they might do two because of it's a holiday weekend as well. But when this premiered, they showed one episode on air. But when people went to the app, Showtime Anytime, I think is what it's called. Uh, there were four episodes made available. Oh. I wasn't I wasn't going to talk about this show. I wasn't even going to watch this show. You and I are both fans uh, of a podcast called The Watch, which no one should listen to because... I haven't listened to The Watch in a, several weeks. It's a joke, a joke about it. It's legitimately how we got the idea for this podcast. But anyways, uh, <laughs> they were huge on this show. Uh, originally? Andy, originally. Andy Greenwald, one of his all-time favorite shows. And when they reviewed it when they reviewed these episodes they they have this thing they call the belt which is like the they give the belt to a a tv show that has the best week or is currently the best and it switches hands and whatnot um they gave this the belt for the best tv and they talked about it glowingly uh heard other people talk about it glowingly and I even heard them talk on TV talk about it to a certain extent. And I was like, okay, if Josh McCuga can get into this, then surely I can. So I sat down to watch it and I have my own thoughts. And can we talk yeah. about the original, how we feel about the original series? First? Absolutely. I've watched maybe the first two or three episodes of the original series with the friend that you refer to, Cody. Uh, he was on this huge David Lynch kick. It's it was it became a joke. Yeah, it became a joke. He was been, all about. He watched them all and drive twice in one day. Really, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, and that's why he always wanted us to podcast about it, just so he could hear what we thought. Um, <laughs> which is very flattering. 
um yeah he watched he like couldn't take his eyes off it and i still don't know how he fe- actually feels about it to this day he could never clarify how he feels about it he just tells me like it was in a he was in a trance and he watched this film well now i want to now i want to review it just so i can find <laughs> out how he felt about it a giant bird just flew by the window and it, it i'm glad i shut terrified my window me um what is this twin peaks i watched the first uh two or three episodes and i remember um laughing at how ridiculous it was um the old lady yelling about her blinds across the street, uh, the horrible acting, but not only was it horrible acting, you could tell it was done purposefully. Yeah. Um, uh, just, just weird, um, dated to me. It was hard for me to watch this cause it, it looks like an old show too dated. Uh, in my it's, opinion. it's, it's, it's a little dated and the, the tone of it makes it even worse. Like when you're watching what twin peaks was in 2016, it even f- dates it further back yeah, because of the way it appears uh, as well, a show. Well, just history on the show in general. The show was on ABC. Is that correct? Originally? I don't know. On ABC originally, a huge, massive hit its first season. Uh, David Lynch didn't like sort of having the reins on him. I mean, it was a murder mystery first season. They essentially... He had no plans on even revealing anything about the murder yeah. for a very long time. And they forced his hand, making him reveal it because, you know, network TV, they're like, people want to yeah, see yeah, what yeah. this is about. Uh, yeah, I, I tried to watch it multiple times. How many episodes did you get into the original series? Probably about four or five. So and, barely further than and, me. And it came to a point where... I was watching them, but I wasn't really watching them. And yeah. It's just, it was too dated. And there's dated in terms of like the pacing of things and the story arcs. Those things can be dated, but then there's just the actual style, the aesthetic of it. It just, I couldn't, couldn't do it. Now, I am a massive, massive, massive fan of the theme song of this show. I love the theme song of this show. I have it on, on a playlist. I listen to it quite frequently. I love it. It's uh, some post-rock shoegazy goodness. Some twangy guitar sounds like something you would hear on a brand new album. It's fantastic. I'm glad. Okay. Uh, let's talk about how we felt watching this episode before going in. So basically, based I watched on, three. You watched three episodes? Based on my impression of the first series... Um, I was not interested at all. I had no problem doing it because I wanted to talk about it on this show, but I was not interested in the least talking about this show. In fact, I was getting a little frustrated because so many people were hyped up. So many people were amped up after it came back because, you know, I follow a lot of TV, Twitter and movie, Twitter, people that are watching this show. I was a little peeved at how much attention the show was getting because I had an idea in my head of what the show was going to be based on because a show like Twin Peaks isn't going to come back and be different than what it was. Like you just know that it's already, it's going to be an, just a modern take or a modern looking version of what it always was. I was hoping at the very least that maybe I would be more interested in it because we were getting modern visuals and you know, shot with good cameras and widescreen. I mean, that's something you have to take into consideration too. Yes. Um, yeah. So I watched the first episode. You watched the first three on Showtime. Mm-hmm. It within 10 minutes of watching this show, which I think was only two scenes. I was ready to launch my Xbox one controller out the window. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's tough. I okay. You Very know how tough. you know how you mentioned before on this podcast that it literally makes like okay, opinions are opinions, film is subject, subjective, TV is subjective, or whatever. But when someone when you hear someone say the Force Awakens is bad, you genuinely have a problem with it. Actually, I'm not even going to use Star Wars as an example because it's hard to look at that subjectively uh, because you and I are big Star Wars fans. So let's talk about how. Let's talk about modern children's cartoons. Okay. It's it's easy for one of us to be like, I don't understand. Like, when we watch 
children cartoons nowadays, I guarantee it makes you nostalgic, right? For yep. what you had as a kid. Absolutely. You probably have uh, an opinion on your favorite shows growing up and how they're absolutely better than the trash, quote unquote, that kids grow up with today. Yes. But when we actually assess ourselves and think about it, we can still say, I understand why kids like this. Bright colors, poop humor. We we understand why kids like the cartoons that they do nowadays, even though we have that nostalgic feeling towards our own shows. I do not at all understand why people love this show. I genuinely cannot grasp how this is a high profile drama that gets people hooked and makes it a must watch show from week to week. I think a lot of the discussion has to, has to go back to when the show came out. I, I don't remember when the show was actually on the air. I don't know what it was like to be a teenager how to watch this show in the greater zeitgeist of pop culture at that time. But I can understand how seeing a show like Twin Peaks in an era where so much of pop culture was was watered down. I mean, you think about pop culture in general, the, the radio. Let's just t- 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 to talk about music for a second. Music is force fed, to you, spoon fed to you. Uh, movies for the most part, censorship in general is so, you know, it's just very, it's a very closed minded, I think would be a good word to put a box over the, the idea of pop culture back in that time. When you have something this out there and this left field on network television, that's just doing some crazy oddball shit. I think that can be appealing from time to time. Uh, in the same way that maybe a show like Legion to us is so uh, shocking because it is a comic book property, but comic book properties haven't been like Legion. Now, time has passed. The landscape and the spectrum is different. Those things that I just discussed, they don't really exist anymore. There are TV shows that have been inspired by cues that have been set forth by this show art in general has been inspired by things on this show and that's fine i have no problem with something that. like atlanta that we referenced absolutely before. uh louis ck yeah who david lynch has been on louis yeah <laughs> one of my favorite episodes of louis um but with that microscope now of today of modern time i'm sorry this show is not good not only is it not good, the only appeal I can personally see is what I call the the victory lap. This show is no different than when Arrested Development came back. When that show came back, the only appeal was to see the faces that you knew and loved pop up. But the difference between this show, Twin Peaks, and that show is that Arrested Development had a very identifiable storyline. Yeah. This show prides itself on ambiguity, on being interpretive, which is great, and art can do that, and that's fantastic. That's highbrow to a certain extent. But for me, this show basically uses that as a cop-out to not tell a good story. So let's pause for a second. Okay. Going back to what you said about how you understand how something as absurd, uh, like early in the early 90s, can come out and do well success uh, critically, or... Based on viewership numbers. I can get on board with I don't fully agree. It would make sense to me if something like that came out and it was a critical darling, but people still didn't watch. Yeah. The fact that it had the viewership that it did still angers me and blows my mind. Because things, things like this do come out where audiences don't get them, but they can be critical darlings. And that would make more sense to me than the viewership numbers do. So... But what you just said, I agree 100%. And you know how I feel about things that are weird for the sake of being weird. Because if if we allow things to be weird for the sake of being weird, then basically you can throw out taste in general. Because that means you can literally do anything. I can find the world's worst YouTube video 
and call it weird for the sake of being weird. Yeah. And, and it's a cop out, like you said. And a huge group of people will utilize the phrase of, oh, well, you just didn't understand it. And exactly. that's, it's, it's bullshit because here's the other thing about this. Like I said, other things have been influenced by this. There are shows like Twin Peaks that do Twin Peaks better than Twin Peaks is doing it. And all of our examples have been comedies. Yes. Which make it not only more accessible, but you know, I have a really hard time watching Twin Peaks knowing I'm not supposed to take it seriously, if that's the point. Yeah, exactly. Because because to get there, I have to watch a show that has purposefully poor acting in it. And that, that drives me nuts. I think the issue with me and where I had to put my foot down with this was the fact that I went through I went through three episodes and the fact that I mean those three episodes were so loosely tied together to one another mm-hmm. that I found it just I mean it was just ridiculous. I, I thought it was silly, and there were there were a whole like I, I believe in the, the third episode there is a long and I mean long sequence. It's essentially a cold open, I think, that goes for like ten minutes, where there is like no very little dialogue, and everything. Everything that you see skips like you're listening to a CD with a scratch on it. Yeah. And it'll like repeat the same part. Yeah. And to a certain extent, stuff like that is can be interesting, 100%. But in that same episode, they had an entire maybe five-minute sequence of a guy just painting shovels, I think it was. And at one point, I just thought to myself and said, this is incredibly self-indulgent. Yeah. Like incredibly. I once saw a band called Some Girls Play. And this band had a part in their song where they said ape repeatedly and they pointed at every single person in the room and did it. This was a venue that had 500 people in it. And at one point, I just said, this is not art anymore. I'm sorry. (laughs) It's not. It's not. This is just you doing it because somebody told you that you could if you wanted to. Right. And that's that's a little far for me to go that it's not art. It, it it's it's art in whatever way, shape, or form it is. And there are parts in the show that I did find interesting that had commentary, like the whole glass box uh, in New York City thing, the, like the opening segment. Essentially, uh, I saw that as a commentary for people watching TV being forced to do something, not even knowing what they're watching, waiting for something to happen. I get it. And that was me. And the show... That was us. The show became a smoke monster that came out of my TV screen and literally stabbed me. And now I have no emotion. Yeah. It's all been drained for me. Um, I think a lot of people... Because from my tweet, there were a couple of people that were telling me, oh, watch the original series. You'll get this episode. Or... You're you're crazy because I I straight up called Twin Peaks trash on my Twitter. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people were quick to defend it, and I can see a lot of people saying the you know you just don't understand it that type of thing or to give it more of a chance. How can you talk about the show when you've only seen two episodes of the first season? How can you talk about the show when you've only seen the first episode? The difference is, I will give a show one, two, three episodes, the four episode rule. Um, to see when a show gets better, good, or to understand its identity. My genuine, my actual thoughts on this, if I was to continue watching this series, I would be watching three to four episodes just to see if this ends up becoming a TV show for me at all. Because as it stands, it is not. And that's the difference. I'm, I'm putting my foot down and saying, this is nothing. I have zero interest in it. Yeah, And that's what I would be doing. I would literally be watching just to see if it actually ever becomes a show to watch. The only reason I wanted to continue watching the show is, is purely because of the extensive list of ridiculous cameos that are in the show. I was going to yeah. Which, in my opinion, kind of also reinforces the fact that it's self-indulgent it has I mean, cameo appeal and, yeah, and you talked about and, having appeal and a sh- like what it is. if this meant something at all you don't need to lean on that 
like the headlines the the headlines that I saw from from this show were all about the cameos. One of the biggest ones was watch Michael Sarah's cameo in Twin Peaks. Okay, so what? At least Force Awakens put Daniel Craig in a stormtrooper outfit. Exactly. Like, don't get me wrong. Eddie Vedder is somewhere yeah. in the show. I, I'd love to see him just because I love him. Yeah. But Sh- shout know, out man. to Ashley Judd. Good yeah. Kentucky girl in the first episode, at least. I didn't, I'm not going to continue to watch past this. Matthew Lillard. Good to see him alive. Um, yeah, it has cameo appeal, and that's about it. Um, I just talked to Mark Ellis earlier this week about being confident in my opinions. Mm-hmm. I I refuse to believe that this is good. Yeah. And I'm sticking to it. Yeah, I mean, I think there are good elements of the show, but I just... The opening credits? I think the thing... The song? The thing that frustrates me about it is that, like I said, I feel like the ambiguity and the interpretive aspect of it is a is kind of a cop out for not writing a good show. I wrote I wrote a whole series of thoughts down on my phone just to make sure I didn't forget, but you have a show like like Atlanta for sort of and a show like Breaking Bad, you know, the pinnacle of television. I mean, these people spend so much time and effort crafting a perfect story that has a, be- a beginning and an end and spans across years. And it's tied together perfectly. And then you have a show like this that's so loose and so, like I said, interpretive that doesn't tell a coherent and comprehensive story. And if I criticize it for that, if I say Twin Peaks, the story is trash, then they get, well, it's interpretive. You have, you don't get it. And it's like, that's a cop out then. It's a cop out. If they would have just done this show as weird as it is and still succeeded at writing a comprehensive story, then we can start talking about great t- TV and TV that says something and TV that's meaningful and leaves its mark. Guys, if you are watching this and you feel frustrated, <laughs> please go watch Atlanta season one. W- watching us or watching Twin Peaks? Twin Peaks. Frustrated by us or Twin Peaks? If they're frustrated by Twin Peaks and you're not getting it, go watch the better version of Twin Peaks, which is Louie or Atlanta. It's it's just far better. I genuinely believe I could tomorrow, on a whim, write, direct, come up with a TV pilot as good as <laughs> Twin Peaks. And if not, I will use the cop out of, well, you just didn't understand it. Yeah. And I will not accept that you dislike my show until you admit that Twin Peaks sucks. The only, uh, the, the last thing, the last thing, the last thing that I'll say about this, that this reminds me of, it kind of reminds me of when a band that you loved comes back and plays music. Like, for example, we just talked about Linkin Park last week. And at a certain point, you kind of look around and it's like, okay, I like this band then, but there are so many other bands now. Like I told so many people after that conversation, look, if you're missing Lincoln Park, if you're missing Hybrid Theory or Meteora, Lincoln Park, just go listen to uh, Bring Me the Horizon because they made a, yeah <laughs> they made the new Lincoln Park album that you're looking for yeah and that's how like I said that's how I feel about Atlanta. I need to get the bad taste out of my mouth. I think we're we're about done uh, tearing Twin Peaks to shreds. Uh, you can follow the Twitter poll at Sight Sound Pod. Did you enjoy the return of Twin Peaks? Uh, simply yes or no. Uh, definitely check that out. I will. Uh, we'll do the Twitter polls up until that point because I literally just posted that. Will you do? Um, is which is better, Twin Peaks season three? Is this season three or four? It's three. Twin Peaks season three or Atlanta season one? Well, people aren't going to want to answer that because Twin Peaks season three isn't done. That's true. So, who did Twin Peaks better, Twin Peaks or Atlanta? Okay, I'll do that. Um, but anyway, uh, well, here, wrap it up while I'm doing that. Okay, guys, thanks so much for joining us. This has been one of the oddest David Lynchian episodes of Sight and Sound we've ever done. Uh, can, I I can understand if you'd hate it if that's the case. We can uh, we can comfortably say that. It's hot in Ryan's room. 
and the lights are off and I'm looking at a weird picture right now on his TV, but that's okay. Uh, you guys know where to find us at site sound pod on Twitter and Instagram. It's the same for both. You can also find us on Facebook, uh, at site sound pods at facebook.com slash site sound pod. Is that yeah. right? Uh, make sure to like us there. That would be fantastic. Get why? Your, why? Why are we promoting our Facebook? Because we haven't done that forever. Something, something people to find us at. You can also buy your t-shirts, get your new twin peaks themed t-shirts at site Uh, we also have leftover shirts and a bunch of other stuff. Some new t-shirts coming on the way. You can find my music show every single Friday. We've got new episode formats coming in the future. Also, subscribe on YouTube. Ryan, where can I find you? You can't. On why media? do you just gloss over YouTube, guys? Check out our YouTube content. We got a ton of it's a bunch of videos featuring. We, me. we put all of our uh, podcasts up there. We put all of Jay's videos up there. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's definitely the place to be. I call it home base for everything sight and sound. Uh, just to give you an idea of the Twitter polls. Do you like surprise album drops from your favorite artists? 86% said yes. Are rap and hip-hop becoming stale musical genres? 57% said yes. Is Wonder Woman going to have a Rotten Tomatoes score higher or lower than 70%? 75% said higher. Did you enjoy the return of Twin Peaks with two votes? 50-50. Uh, and then uh, the most recent one doesn't even have votes. So uh, anyway, there's that. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find all that stuff in the description below. Um, follow me on Twitter at What Up Snell. And uh, I need to get the bad taste out of my mouth and watch the leftovers. Are you going to continue on with Master of None? Yes. Good. I'm glad everybody else should as well. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at J Williams J to the A to the Y to the E. It's the same for both. And look, guys, we're actually wrapping up our seventh month of Sight and Sound. It's it's kind of crazy. It feels like it's been a lot longer. And I think sometimes, <laughs> I think sometimes we're guilty of not seeing the forest through the trees. We thank you guys so much for being with us and sticking with us through everything. And for everybody that's new, welcome. Uh, this is Sight and Sound where we discuss music, movies, and television. I think the next half of the year is exciting. We've got some cool stuff we're planning. We're always trying to make things better. And we really appreciate all the support. You got anything else, man? Bye. We'll see you. <laughs>